This video is a great introduction to sequences. A sequence is simply an ordered list of elements that's created by some function that maps the integers to a set s. So a sub n actually just represents the n term, so that's a subscript. So if they give me something like this, this is telling me in order to find the values of the sequence in a sub n, all I have to do is take 2 times n, where n represents the whatever term I'm looking at. And typically you're going to start with an a sub 0. So a sub 0 says 2 times 0 according to this sequence. And then you'll have an a sub 1, so in this case 2 times 1, which is 2 a sub 2, which is 2 times 2, which is 4, a sub 3, which is 2 times 3, which is 6, and we can see that if they're asking me to find the set of values that create the sequence, that would be 0, 2, 4, 6, and this pattern would continue. We're going to look at two types of sequences in this video. The first is the arithmetic sequence that is formed essentially by adding just some common difference starting with some initial term. And we're just going to keep adding that common difference n times. So let's take a look at what that means before we do any practice. My first term in the sequence is whatever they tell me it is, the initial term a. To get to the next term, I'm just going to add d. And then to get to the next term, I'm going to add d again, or I could have just added 2d to my initial term. And then to get to the next term, I'm going to add d again, or again, I could have added 3d to the initial term. And we can see that that pattern's going to continue, and we're just going to have n d's added to the original. Now, why is this important? Because in arithmetic sequence, we can either just use the initial term and the common difference to find values in the sequence, or we can write it explicitly. And explicitly means I can write an equation where all I have to do is plug in n and to find whatever term I want. So for instance, a sub n in this case, well in any case, would be a plus dn, or nd, it doesn't matter which one comes first. So this is how you write an arithmetic sequence explicitly. Remember this, because it's not going to go away, and when we talk about recurrence relations, we're going to see why writing things explicitly is so important. For our first question here, number one, they've given me A and they've given me D. So if I want, I can go ahead and write this as A sub N is equal to 5 plus 2N. This is how I would write this explicitly. If I wanted to find, answer this question, and find the first five terms of the sequence, then I've got a choice. I can either, I mean, either way, I'm starting with five because that's my initial term. If I want, I can then just use that common difference of two to say, okay, to get to the next one, I'm just going to add two. And then to get to the next one, I'm going to add two. And then to get to the next one, I'm going to add two and add two. And we can see this pattern would continue. So what we've done there is essentially a recurrence relation, and that's our next video is a recurrence relation, but I just want to point out to you the difference now. A recurrence relation says take something that you have before it and do something to it to get the next term. An explicit function doesn't need the term before it. So let's say this was a sub 0, this was a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4. So let's find a sub 4 using my explicit function. a sub 4 would be 5 plus 2 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. Notice I got 13, the same as I got when I wrote it out recursively. So again, you might not quite get the recursively and explicitly yet. We're going to focus on that in the next video, but this is just a good precursor to that. The second question says, find A and D for the sequence. So again, it's not necessary for us to write this in the 
explicit form, but it's not a bad idea to get the practice. But we're saying, hey, we don't have A and we don't have D. Here's a sequence, figure it out. So seven, obviously, is my first term. A must be seven, which means over here, A would be seven. Notice I'm not doing anything to the left side. We keep that so that we understand that's how to find the nth term. Now I have to find the common difference. So here I'm going to take the term before it and subtract the first term, and whatever I get is going to be my common difference. Now I could do that again. I get a common difference of negative three. I could also say one minus four, also negative three, and that should be the same all the way through, otherwise it's not an arithmetic sequence. So here we have just found D is negative three, again by taking a term before and adding the pre or subtracting the previous term. So now if I wanted to write this explicitly, I could write negative three D. The other sequence we want to take a look at here is the geometric sequence. And a geometric sequence is different from an arithmetic sequence because in an arithmetic sequence we were adding and in a geometric sequence we are multiplying. So just like we did in our last example, we want to know how can we write this explicitly because again, that's going to be super important moving forward. So let's take a look at what the geometric sequence is all about. We start with some term A, so that's what we're familiar with, and then we're going to multiply by some common ratio, which is R, and we're going to do that N times. So here I'm going to take A times R to get AR. Then I'm going to multiply by R again, or Remember, that means I've essentially multiplied my initial term times r twice, or r squared. Not two times r, but squared. And then times r again. So now I've multiplied by three r's, and then times r, and times r, and I'm doing this n number of times. So if you need to write a geometric sequence explicitly, a sub n would be a times r to the n. So again, remember this because it's not going to go away, you're going to use it a lot. So let's take a look at the two types of questions. Again, here, they're telling me A is four, and N, or R, is three. So it's four times three to the N. Now, just as I did before, I can either look at this recursively by taking whatever the term was before it, or I can look at the explicit definition. So if I want to find the first five terms, my first term is four, and that's considered a sub zero, because it's the initial term. And then to find the next term, if I'm doing it recursively, I'm just taking this three and saying, well, I'm gonna multiply by three to get 12. And then I'm gonna multiply that by three to get 36 and then I'm gonna multiply that by three to get 108, and that by three to get 324, and that's all I have to find because they said first five terms. The other way that you can do this, again, this would be a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four. The other way that you can do this is, of course, use this explicit definition. So let's look at a sub three. According to my definition, it says four, times three to the third. Well, three to the third is three times three times three, or 27, and four times 27 gives me 108. So we can see that whether I did it recursively just by multiplying the term before it by three or using this explicit function, I'm going to get the same answer. For my second question, again, I have find A and R, and here's the sequence. So how are we gonna go about this? Well, again, A is very easy to find. So over here, we're going to build our A, R to the N, because you should get in the habit of being able to write it explicitly. If the first term is three, I'm going to replace A with three. And then the question becomes, how do I find the next value in the sequence? 
So just as I did before, I'm going to take the next value, so not the initial, but the next value, 3 halves, and I'm going to divide it by the term before it. So in the last one we subtracted, and of course we subtracted because that's the opposite of addition, and this term we're going to divide because that's the opposite of multiplication. So 3 halves divided by 3, a lot of people freeze up when they have fractions. 3 halves divided by 3 is the same as 3 halves times 1 third. Remember I can multiply by that reciprocal, which means I get 1 half. 1 half is R, my common ratio. Now whenever you have a common ratio that's less than 1, that's when you're going to get something where the terms decrease. So if it's between 0 and 1, that's when you're going to get a decreasing sequence. But what I found is r is 1 half, and so I could rewrite this as 1 half to the n. Now, I know that you know this already, but just to be safe, remember that when I write it like this, the 1 half is the only thing that goes to the nth power. So that 4 right here isn't to the nth power, and this 3 right here is not to the nth power. It's just whatever that um, R value is, that common ratio. So again, they've asked me to find A, and A was 3. They've asked me to find R, and R was 1 half. So up next, we're going to explore recurrence relations in a lot more detail. And so hopefully in this video, I gave you an idea of the difference between a recurrence relation and explicit definition. But if not, hopefully I'll make it clear in the next video.